You're listening to GeekWire from Seattle, Washington on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM and GeekWire.com. All right, it's time to get geared up from GeekWire.com in Seattle. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Coming up this week, Samsung finally explains what really happened to the (laughs) Samsung Galaxy Note 7. For real this time. For real, right. I mean, I think we all knew. Exactly. (laughs) A new feature from Apple, make sure you won't lose those AirPods, which is a big concern of John Cook, as we know. That's true. Yes. That's true. So finally, we can set his mind at ease. Uh (laughs) (laughs) And Jay-Z's Tidal Music Streaming Service gets a surprising new investor. Yes. Surprised the heck out of me. Right. And confused. Yeah, and confused. All right. So we'll explain all of that later on. Plus, we'll do a deep dive into all of the streaming music services that are available out there now and talk about some of our favorites. Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. Let's kick it off. Where are we going first? So, Samsung, let's start with this this whole situation. Oh, man. Your favorite device of 2016, your favorite smartphone, the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, it had a tendency to burn, explode. And I mean, look at. I mean, first of all, just look at. Isn't that a beautiful device, though? Look, it is. Have you, have it's you a good held looking device. One in your hand, have you seen one in person? Yes. It's a great device. It was glass on front, glass on back. It was curved glass on both sides. You had this cool, like this is the blue coral with like the gold. Around. It just looked great. Um, I'm not a big fan of styluses, though. But this has, this was the most technology packed phone. I think ever made. As I think you've said, if you could have iOS on this device, uh, you would never want another phone again. Well, I'd want another one eventually because <laughs> I like new stuff. But for this year, that would have been perfect. I mean, the size was great. And again, the display, everything about this phone was fantastic, except the battery that it would explode. <laughs> right, the battery. So it exploded. So this is the very complicated, overly technical explanation from Samsung about why these two batteries, the first original one, and then the ones that they installed in the replacement devices, had a tendency to combust. Right, and, and to just to back up for a moment, so basically we found, or people were finding these were like spontaneously combust, and it was determined that it was likely the battery. So like, okay, we're going to recall all the ones that are out there, and we're going to replace them because we fixed the problem, we found the issue, um, and if you get the new phone, no more explosions. And what was found very quickly was that the new phone exploded just as much, if not more, than the previous one. So, I mean, that's horrible. What's crazy, though, is how do you go from having a serious issue in the first place and then saying you found and addressed the problem and then still having the problem? Right. Now, they now here in the report, they expressed that it was actually two totally different problems, but... What took them so long to even divulge this first one? Because it, it sounds like they missed they misdiagnosed it originally. I don't know. What do you think? I think so. Well, and what happened was Samsung came out with the report this week. There were two separate flaws, one in the first battery, one in the second battery, the replacement mm-hmm. battery. But this, to me, was the key quote. The Wall Street Journal pressed right. the Samsung chief, and he said, he said, in hindsight, he embraces and takes responsibility for the malfunction in part because the design of the phone was, quote, quite aggressive. Quite aggressive. Which says to me that basically they were demanding too much from these battery makers in terms of squishing all of these components into the appropriate space. Right. And this and this is actually something that, uh, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And most people don't realize this. Like, they get very upset when changes get made to the phone when the changes are made specifically for space reasons. So, for example, a few years ago, When Apple got rid of the 30-pin connector in favor of Lightning, everybody was upset. Now i got to buy all new cables. I've had these cables since I've owned my iPod, and now you're changing it. And Apple was saying, we couldn't have made the iPhone 5 without removing that large 30-pin. We couldn't have made this device. Then, recently, they removed the headphone jack. Huge controversy, right? Um, They also made the SIM card smaller two times during the course of original iPhone to today. And it's all because... There's a there's a fight to have as much space as possible inside right. of the device. So when people get upset about you know these changes are being made and are taking features away, and when the manufacturers say, well, it's because we need the space to do other things, that really is true. And you can see here with the Note Seven that that lack of space was actually uh, a safety issue. Right. Absolutely. So here's the question. So now that they've come out with the explanation, yeah. they've basically said, okay, and it was in part Samsung's fault, they admit. That in they part were, versus 
Well, part of the issue I mean, isn't here it their, was, it's their it's, it's, it's their, their fault, fault in whole. It's their fault. Well, it, they can. You, there is a case to be made that it was the the battery suppliers who were to blame, but Samsung is acknowledging that it was largely because, or in part because, the design constraints of the phone were too much. Sure. And so, so it's kind of both ways. But they are taking responsibility. So here's my question: When the Samsung uh, Galaxy Eight comes out, mm-hmm. knowing that they're pushing the envelope on design, I'm sure they right. will. Will you feel comfortable buying it? Me, yes. I mean, the thing is, even with the Note 7, it was very, very rare that those explosions were happening, um, although they were happening. Um, but I think, I mean, once you go through this, at the bottom line is, at the end of the day, if this happens again, yeah, they're done, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. If this happens again, if they have another one of these situations with another smartphone, flagship phone or not flagship phone, for that matter, they're done. So... They they say they've addressed the cause. You can see battery A, battery B. Um, if you're listening on a podcast, we have a display up here showing both issues. Um, they not only have they addressed these issues, but in my opinion, they now know what to look for to avoid it in the future, or should, and they should be able to not have that happen again. They've set in place, I know, internal uh, processes like extensive review of these types of things, mm-hmm. and almost like a, a review board to to look right. at these issues and make sure that it doesn't happen again. So here's what GeekWire readers said when we asked that same okay. question: Will you buy a Samsung phone again? Fifty five percent said yes, they're comfortable owning a Samsung phone. Okay. Thirty three percent said no. I'm staying away from Samsung phones. Okay, and about twelve and a half percent were undecided. Now, admittedly unscientific, but even if that thirty three percent is ten percent, that is a giant chunk of Samsung's True. market share. True. What I want to know from those people is: Were you someone who was previously buying Samsung phones? Because if you're an iPhone user for the past, you know, ten years, you're like, yeah, I'm staying away. So, you know, that, that that was the premise of the question. Okay. Now, who knows whether people actually stayed true to that? I'm right, sure we right. had some iPhone fanboys, but so you got a very large margin for error there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, and I can't blame you for staying away because, first of all, I mean, the thing with Android, and again, this is just my opinion, but the average consumer sees it as iPhone and Samsung. Those are your two choices when it comes yeah. to smartphones. But in reality, um, and I think people are starting to see this over the past, really over the past year, is Android. There are so many great devices at such great prices where Samsung is the premium right. device, but right. you can get an Android phone from you know Huawei, which is out of China, for two hundred and fifty dollars. Right. That is almost feature parity with you know a Galaxy. Maybe it doesn't have as many megapixels or not as high res a screen, but for all intents and purposes, right. you can get a fantastic phone. And then there's the other you know flagship phone makers like LG, uh, for example. Google now has their own first yep. party device, so. You know, that's the other thing where it's become easier to avoid Samsung. Like if this was Apple yep. and Apple had this issue with a flagship phone, you can't get iOS anywhere else. So you have to make like a hard change to not only your hardware maker, but your software as well. Yep. Whereas with Android, you just leave Samsung and pick up another one. It's the same software. So you, you, know, you keep all your apps, keep all your settings, and you just change the hardware. Yeah. So, yeah, um, but I, like you said, they're taking a harder stance on reviewing these things now, and they actually just announced that they are not launching the Galaxy S8 at Mobile World Congress, which the last three Mo- Mobile World Congresses is where they launched the uh, S5, S6, S7. So the S8 is, I mean, I don't know if you call it a delay because they didn't an- announce it yet, but it's going to take longer yeah. for that one to be introduced to the world probably because of this. Yeah, okay. Well, fascinating. It'll be interesting to see what the smartphone market share is a year from now, whether Samsung yeah. slips a lot. I, I think they've got to slip some here. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's move on to our next one. This is, a, right, what this we is got? an interesting one. So this just came Ooh. out just recently, just now. This is the answer right The answer to John Cook's biggest question, right, my colleague John Cook, about the AirPods, and you've got a, a pair of them there. It's a pair of AirPods. It's very small, the, right? The first question that many people ask about these devices, these wireless Earpods, basically, is I hate how this do, question. Okay, so the, but the question is, how do you keep track of them? How do you not lose them? Right. And so your answer normally is, I'm an adult. <laughs> I mean, that's how I don't lose my stuff. I know how to take care of my stuff. It's not that hard. I mean, look at these things, Andrew. Though, <laughs> come on, they're tiny. They're tiny. I know, but okay. So this here's is, the look thing, at this. Right? I, I lose my regular my regular Apple earpods and they're tied together. <laughs> right. But okay. People okay, this is just again. 
I think people have an easier time losing things that aren't as expensive. So the more expensive something is, the less likely you are to lose that thing. Um, when people were buying those Bluetooth headsets, you know, five years ago or whatever, the ones that you just put in your ear to talk on the phone, those were just as small, if not smaller, and no one was making the complaint, oh my God, who's going to buy these? Why are you going to lose them? But the second Apple puts something out, they have to find the negative somewhere. Oh, they're going to lose them. I'm, isn't that just because people love Apple products and I they guess. don't want to lose them? I'm not four years old, so okay. I know how to take care of my stuff. So here's the thing. For this non-existent problem, at least in your <laughs> view, and an actual problem in my view, Apple has come up with a solution. Yes. Apple has come up with a solution. And we're going to tell you about it right after this break. You're listening to Geared Up on GeekWire. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. It's Geared Up on GeekWire on Kyra Radio from GeekWire.com in Seattle. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. And Monica Nicholsberg is joining us from the GeekWire yes. News team to take part in the upcoming discussion about the music streaming services and the news this past week. But This is our first guest on the show, by the way. It is. It is. I hope I don't mess it up. Thank you. <laughs> so, But just to continue our conversation from before the break, Andrew, right. Andrew says this is not a problem, and yet Apple has taken steps to solve it your your it's airpods your airpods if they were to get lost yes a new feature in the find my iphone app right uh is coming out that will allow you to locate your airpods yes. as well that's cool i mean i like that now Listen. do you think they always had that in the works or is it a response to everybody saying these are ridiculous you're gonna lose them i think it was in the works probably i think it was so this is coming out in the next version of os 10 yes no, no, iOS. iOS 10. I'm sorry, iOS 10. iOS 10.3. 10. 10. 10. 10. 3. Mm -hmm. And so, what's how's it going to work? Well, that's what's confusing. So there's a there's a W1 chip built into these, but I don't think that that's how it's working. I think it's locating the case. If I had to, if I had to guess, it's locating the case. Um, but, and I only saw this news briefly before I left to come here. I think it'll also emit a high pitched sound from each AirPod itself, so that you know it may not. She's laughing. It may, <laughs> it may not locate on a map for you the actual earpiece, but it'll make it make a sound so that you can go and find where that sound is coming from. Yes. So uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, Joanna Stern says that it, it's not perfect. She's tested it out, but it, it gives her an approximate location. It's not an exact location of the AirPods in mm -hmm. the same way that that the, the Find My iPhone Right, is. because the iPhone and all those other devices have Wi-Fi and GPS built in, whereas these obviously do not. So here's what it does. It allows users to view the last general location their AirPods were connected to another device ah. via Bluetooth and play a sound to help find them. Okay. So in that way, it's kind of similar to the Apple Maps feature, which can locate your car. Yes. Which is yes. my favorite feature of Apple this Maps. I love that. I, I, that's all I can talk about. It's like, <laughs> yep, I parked and there it is. <laughs> so at any rate, so that's coming out as part of iOS 10.3, not right. OS 10. Right. OS 10 does have a new feature coming too, though. Yes. Uh, the next version will have Night Shift built in, which is a feature that automatically reduces the amount of blue light coming out of your display as nighttime falls. So, uh, but you said during the break that you hate. I this. hate this on what? my iPhone, Monica. Do you use this on your iPhone? Night shift. The night shift. It like makes the screen yellow as the day gets darker. No, but I would totally use it. I turn the brightness down later in the evening because I know that it kind of messes with your sleep. Yeah. Mm, so, so yeah. So, so in response to that, same same issue. You turn night shift on, but I don't. So you can manually enable and disable it. And if you do that, it's very jarring because it's very obviously blue and then very obviously yellow immediately. But you can set it to automatically through, you know, over the course of an hour or so, when night, when uh, when sundown happens, it'll automatically shift from blue to yellow slowly, and then you don't notice it happening, but you don't get that blue light hitting your eyes, and you don't have the sleep, you know, pattern issues and all that kind of stuff. And then when morning comes, it goes back to right. blue, and you don't see that shift happen because you've been sleeping the whole time. So I highly recommend it because it does, I think. Uh, you know, it does a good thing for your mind and your brain and your eyes. Um, and now they're bringing it to the Mac. So if you're working, you know, you have a, you know, you're working late at night or whatever. Right. When sundown hits, your Mac will start, you know, slowly reducing the amount of blue light coming out of it. And I think that's pretty cool. Very cool. So that's yeah, what that's going to totally the features that. coming. All right. Yeah. Good. Let's talk about title, shall All we? All right. Title. All right. Title. So moving on to the streaming music services. Oh, Monica, man. this is one reason we wanted to have you in here. The news this past week. So, first off, there's a couple pieces of news. A couple about pieces Tidal. of news. So, the news is that Title got a 
surprising investment from the wireless carrier Sprint. Yes. 33%. But let's take a step back. Mm -hmm. What the heck is Tidal? All right. <laughs> Tidal. Tidal is a, I think most people refer to it as a Jay-Z owned music service. I don't know how much he owns or how, you know, because they also said he owned the, the Brooklyn Nets. He wasn't really like <laughs> yes. owning it. Um, maybe he's a majority investor, whatever. But Tidal is just another one of these music services out there, but they offer a premium tier that gives you lossless streaming music for $20 a 20 month. 20 bucks a month, which is right. double the, the standard rate. Double, yeah. So they do, offer, they do offer the regular $10 a month that everybody else offers, but they have the lossless $20 per month tier. Supposedly gives you... You know, much better audio, especially if you're playing it through high, you know, hi-fi headphones or stereo systems. I don't necessarily know if it's that noticeable. If you're using crappy, you know, if you use whatever's included with your phone, you're not going to hear the difference. Right. Um, so that's what Tidal is. Probably won't hear the difference on the AirPods. No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, but Tidal has been at the center of the battle between these streaming music services because they are one of basically the two that have been fighting to get these exclusives. Right. So Jay-Z invited in a bunch of other artists to basically have equity stake in Tidal in exchange for launching you know, new projects exclusively on Tidal. So Beyonce did that. Kanye. Kanye West what, what, did that. What was the name of the Kanye album? Uh, I don't know if Kanye did it. I think Beyonce did it with uh, Lemonade. Kanye did it because he was like, the, my my, my album's never coming to Apple. My, my album's Pablo never coming to first Apple. first on Tidal. Yes. Okay. And he said, it's never coming to Apple. I hate Apple. And then three months later, it's on Apple. Yeah. I mean, no one's, no one's, on, no one's on title. But he's also bitched about it because he's frustrated that certain projects that, that he Europe? does. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's, yes. he's whined about it because um, because he's you know wanted to do collaborations with other artists. And some of them have exclusive deals with Apple Music, like Drake. And then some of them have exclusive with Tidal. But isn't one of Tidal's value propositions to the industry that it pays artists higher royalties. Yes. That or gives is. them gives them a greater stake in the work that they're doing. Yeah. Right. But yet Apple pays more than Spotify does. Okay. So, you know, it's hard to, you know, I think both of them Spotify is the one running away with like we have the most users so we can get away with a little more, but we don't pay as much. Right. So But Spotify is also not trying to really participate in this exclusive yes. game. It's it's said that it's against exclusives, that it hurts fans because they don't get access to as much of the music that they love. Right. True. So Sprint. Before yeah. we go to Sprint, there was some other craziness with Tidal this past week. Was it Tidal? I think it was Tidal, where they were re misreporting yes, that was their Tidal. numbers. Yes. Like, I think they reported publicly, like, we have 3 million user, paid users now, but to the record industries where they have to submit the royalty payments, they were saying, we only have 850,000. Right. Wow. So which one is it, Tidal? Right. And they parted ways with, a, I think, one or two of their executives over the reporting Ooh. of their subscription numbers. Ooh. So Okay. Yeah. So that, that's an issue there. So, so there's some weirdness going on. But then Sprint comes in. Yes. Tell me about this. What happened? So Sprint uh, is acquiring 33%. According to sources that spoke with Billboard, the deal is worth... Two hundred million dollars. Okay. So that would put Tidal's overall value at six hundred million, which is quite a bit higher than what Jay Z paid, which was fifty six million. Oh, so okay. this was an existing service that existed in a different form beforehand. So essentially, Sprint is coming in, but they're not saying exactly what they're going to do with it. They're just promising a one of a kind music experience <laughs> for fans. Wow. So <laughs> the the weird thing here is Sprint has basically fallen to number four. Behind T-Mobile oh, in the four U.S. For a wireless. Long time. Well, year year and a half ago, T-Mobile. T-Mobile used to be number four. I know it's hard to remember an era when John Ledger wasn't, you know, trouncing <laughs> true. Marcelo Clore. Okay. but but still, you know that this T-Mobile used to be number four. So Sprint is not exactly in a powerful position, and then you've no. got it partnering up with this music service that is which not is in another a powerful, underdog. Yes. Yeah, which is usually not a formula for success. What are they doing here? What's I mean? First of all, I think Sprint's going to buy them outright eventually. That's what I but think they're why? doing here. You've got T-Mobile, which has their deal. They had a deal with Rhapsody, which then became Napster to offer you know cut rate music streaming. I think they are going to offer some kind of deal on title subscriptions to Sprint subscribers. I think that's going to be how they're going to do it, which is not novel because T-Mobile's already done that. Yeah. Does I mean? Do you think it's going to move the needle? No, I don't think any of this will. I, and I th this I think, is weird. Yes. This is weird. Do you have any other theories oh, on why they could be doing this? man. Well, I mean, that really... No. It's it's like no one is going to switch carriers for a music service. No one's doing that. Well, what if you were a giant Jay-Z fan 
Mm -hmm. You know, you loved Kanye and, right. and, and Beyonce. Right. And they had exclusives that you could only get if you were a Sprint subscriber. But you could oh, also get them God. if you were a title subscriber, right? Well, well maybe. maybe. Oh, what if you got them first okay. on first oh, my on? Gosh. I don't know. I I, this would... is just this is me theorizing. You could do all sorts of interesting exclusive access what? things to promote. Then you have to think about though, if Sprint becomes the majority owner, will Jay Z and his posse really still want to do these kind of exclusives? True. Yeah. And I was reading back to the launch of Title, at least when Jay Z took it over, and they had all these stars up there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Beyonce yep. and everybody else complaining that, that they didn't make enough money, essentially. Right. Because the whole value proposition for them is they get higher royalties. So, right. And I think, well, that, you know, the whole thing there is, you know, these deals are really optimized for the. What do you call them? The music studios, or yeah. for lack of a better term, yeah, the so record labels. The, the record labels get the majority of the streaming, yeah. you know, payments, and the artists do not. So here with title, the artists kind of cut that out a little bit, and they get the direct yeah. payment. So that's good for them. But I mean, all this is going to do is increase piracy. Yeah. That's what I see. If, well, that's what happened with the life of Pablo. Yes, he, exactly. He, when he did it only on title, it just got pirated everywhere right. else because nobody wanted to no do it. No one's going to switch to Sprint. So let's go bigger picture here. Because this is part of a larger trend. You recognize we're not talking about 99 cent downloads or 999 right. albums here. And this is this is the chart from 2015 that we're looking at here up on the screen. And it shows that streaming services, which include subscription services, were responsible for more revenue starting in 2015, according to the Record Industry Association of America, than digital downloads. So That's all the cart downloads have been surpassed by these streaming services, at least in terms of overall revenue. I cannot remember the last time that I paid 99 cents for a song. Mm. Can you? No. No. Yeah, exactly. No. I wonder how many people out there, I wonder what like the last time. It feels like the model has just Comments. completely Comments, if you're shifted. watching and you have bought yes. music recently, drop us a comment in the feed because I want to know. And why? Why did you do that? Do you not subscribe? So you, you were talking about yes. services that we use, right? Yeah. So, so you use... Pandora, free Pandora. Okay. I'm a total cheapskate. Free Sounds Pandora. Like and then on. We know this already. Yes, we know this. And not as cheap as John. I actually have a car that was made in the last century. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's still rising on his horse to yes, work. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so free Pandora and just put up with the ads. And then uh, Amazon Prime Music. Also so free. Free. Free with free, your subscription. Well, free. It's free with your free subscription. Free after you pay 100 bucks a year. Right. <laughs> So, but, what you, yeah. Okay, hold on. So, so that means to me, what that means is that you do not have the opportunity to just listen to any song you want. Yeah. At any time, you don't have that opportunity, right? Well, that's true. I can't listen to any song. That right. I want. You can exactly. like Pandora. You can listen to the station. Yes. You can skip. Well, no, Amazon, Amazon Prime Music. You can now the not catalog, the whole catalog, not though. the whole catalog. That for that you have to spend money on Amazon Music Unlimited, which costs ten bucks for non-prime subscribers, eight bucks. For primes or seven bucks, what is it? I think it's ten, eight. ten, eight, eight and, and then four dollars if you just want to use it on an Echo device. You could use it with that. You love your Echo. I do. I like Echo. Yeah. I don't have one at home though. I have one here at the office. <laughs> Every cool thing that you have it's is the here office. in the office. Your house. A I keep it separate, man. <laughs> Church and state. Okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> what do you use, Monica? I pretty much exclusively use Spotify Premium. I also sometimes will use SoundCloud if it's something that Spotify doesn't have. That's like a smaller artist who's mm. just kind of self-publishing, but th that's about it. I really need to be able to Paid select. SoundCloud? Paid SoundCloud? No, no. That one I just do free. My okay. paid service is Spotify Premium. I'm on it with a few of my friends on a family plan, and it's totally worth it to Whoa. me. Family plan? Whoa. <laughs> is that allowed? We're, we're a family. Family. <laughs> <laughs> we're an alternative family. Uh, okay, so how does that work, actually? Because so so for, in case people don't know, like all these services seem to have family plans. So they're all $9.99 a month base. And then they all offer a fifteen dollar a month tier for up to six people. Yeah. Um, with the exception of Title, the way Title does it is you can add family members at fifty percent off. Mm. So you would pay your full rate, and then your family member would be half off. So a family of five would actually be twenty five dollars a month because each one is paying five dollars, and you're paying your ten. Right. Uh, versus you know Apple Music, Google Play Music, etc. It would just be fifteen dollars up to six people. So Title needs to catch up. So but how do they build? Because I know with Apple Music, if you have a family up to six, fourteen ninety nine, but they all have to be logged in under the main person's iTunes account. So if, so if I wanted to add you as a family member on my Apple Music plan and you wanted to buy, you know, spend $100 on your Pokemon Go coin purse, that would actually be charged <laughs> to my credit card. 
Uh, it's not like that. Okay. Um, it's basically just an upgrade to your individual Spotify account. So I didn't have to change the free Spotify account that I've been using forever. One of my friends signed up for the account and just added other people's accounts to be basically affiliated Ooh, with nice. it. And we paid a one-time fee wow. for the year. Yeah. They're going to crack down on that. I bet nice. you that won't. When they, when they need to boost their revenue, they're going to start saying – are you really part of a family? You may is need it, to is subscribe. It like up. I'm doing it right now, right? No, I don't. Th- talking I'm, about I'm, it. <laughs> Let's see how many folks are That's watching nice, on the though. Facebook That's live nice. stream. But no, I mean Netflix has never cracked down on it, and HBO Go has never cracked down they on don't. it. They've basically just said that's you know how, that's, that's the, the cost of, consequence of our model. Yeah. So that's you're nice. you're big into Apple Music. Well, I use Apple Music just because you know I use obviously I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, I have my Mac. Um, I never really liked Spotify's interface that much. Yep. That's just me. And then they're very playlist centric, right? Um, and I didn't really like their playlist that much. So, and the other thing is, like, I like being able to just use Siri when I, especially, have CarPlay in my car. Siri, play this, play that, whatever. Um, that doesn't work with Spotify. It does work with Apple Music. So, I just like being able to like have the one, you know, cohesive, yeah, you know, experience. It's the most convenient for me, I guess, is what it is. Because at the end of the day, I think they're really all pretty much the same. They all have very similar libraries. Uh, with the exception of the ex- exclusives, and even, even the exclusives are just timed exclusives. Um, so I just like being able to, you know, talk out loud and ask for stuff and have it play. Yeah. And uh, I'm not really friends with Alexa, so <laughs> I'm not going the Amazon route. Um, and Siri does a pretty good job of that. Siri does a great job at that. Yeah, uh, finding music, and I find Apple's playlist to be better than Spotify's. At least, maybe just for the music I like. I don't yeah. know. But they obviously they have music industry execs putting these things together and DJs putting these things together, um, where some of the other ones, especially Pandora, it's all like based on data and they right. just kind of build playlists based on data. So that's me. But but again, it's not like I, I'm not evangelizing Apple Music. It's just more which one is most convenient for you. Right. Is really what it comes down to. Yeah. So do you, does Spotify have that kind of artificial intelligence built into it as well? or is It has a lot built into it, but then I also think that there are curators of the playlists. Yeah. And um, one thing that I like about it, I don't know if Apple Music has this. It probably does because, like you said, they're all so similar. But you can build radio stations like Pandora based on anything, based on, like, a playlist that you've created or your Discover Weekly playlist. Like, you, the, I just feel like there's – you can do – the same things as many different tools in one tool with premium. You can download for offline listening and it's just, it's worth it for me. I'm yeah. glad to pay for it. Yes. Kevin, Another. Kevin on the Facebook feed, who's been very helpful today. Thank you, Kevin points out Spotify. You compile your own playlist. The radio function is similar to Pandora. The radio function similar to Pandora is just an add on. He says, is that, does yeah. it seem more, seem more native to you. Well, I, I guess I'm not totally clear on what he's saying, but I, I just like that on like on Pandora you have to select an artist, a genre, or a song, I think. And on Spotify you can do it based off of the mood of a playlist that you've yep. created, that kind of thing. I should point out previously in the thread, Kevin called you wise, Monica. <laughs> oh, Kevin. So. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, remember whose show this is. <laughs> yeah, do you guys uh, want me to come back on another one? <laughs> uh, now a couple things that you I think I don't think you can do on Spotify or Title that you can do on Apple and on Google Play Music is you can upload your own tracks. Oh, okay. So with Apple Music and with Google Play, um, I believe it's uh, Apple lets you upload up to 100,000 and Google up to 50,000 of your own tracks. So you might have uh, remixes or even just music you've created yourself and you can play them through whether Apple Music or Google, right. Google Play Music. You can stream your own stuff to it as well, I which is Spotify cool. I think Spotify does that too. Do you like to upload? I think so, yeah. Okay. You can have your library that's hosted on your computer as well as their Oh, that's cool. Stuff. That's yeah. cool. Okay. Because a lot of people have old CDs that they've ripped right, to MP3. Right, exactly. And I was oh, I was into like remixes back in the day. So in the mid '90s, there were so many remixes I would buy, like singles and even um, what do you call it? I forget what they're called now. You would go like you would go like to a street corner, and there'd be like a guy selling CDs, mixtapes. Yes. So you get these street mixtapes, and you could import the mixtapes, but these are these aren't published anywhere. <laughs> And so the mixtapes would have like these special mixes. Do you ever do you ever actually buy CDs off a guy on the street? Back in the day. And then <laughs> see my concern was you buy the CD off the guy on the street, you stick it into your computer and you're done. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You've been watching Mr. Robot, haven't you? <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, like that's like virus all no, over no, the place, no. It right? Was, uh, it was it was mixed. I mean, you would see the. I mean, 
people might not even know what I'm talking about. This was like New York City, Harlem. Yeah. You would go and like, let me get the latest Funkmaster Flex mixtape. And it's like, okay, this is not anything you'd ever see in a record store, but it's really good because the DJ would mix the music, yeah. the popular music to his own way. And so you could import that into your library, but the the automatic recognition that, you know, when you import a song, it wouldn't work on those yeah. because these aren't ever been published anywhere other than on this exact CD. So you could put upload that yeah. to your Apple Music or your um, Google Play or maybe even Spotify and stream those wherever you are, which is really nice. It's something I liked. What else then Apple has Beats there? 1. Be- that's right. The the Essentially the radio station, an right. actual radio station, actual not a software radio station. Right, 24-7 radio station with DJ-hosted shows. Yeah. Um, but I think that's actually free, so I don't, I don't think you need to pay yeah. to listen to that. So, th- I mean, there's a bunch of options out there. Google Play Music yeah. gives you YouTube Red. Do you know what YouTube Red is? Yes, the ad-free version of YouTube. Right. So you basically, when you pay for Google Play Music, you get... Ad free YouTube, oh. and you get YouTube exclusive content that only YouTube Red members can watch. So, and that's kind of weird because they're two like those are two totally different things. Like it's a music service, but your YouTube experience is ad free now, yeah. and you get exclusive videos on YouTube for being a member of the music service. And now it sounds like Apple's going to do the same thing. They're going to be getting into first party video content like Netflix and Hulu or, and Amazon are doing. But they're going to put those shows on Apple Music. Like that, that makes no sense. It's kind of like when you used to click the iTunes icon, which I guess you still do to a sense <laughs> right. to go watch your videos. You yes. know, they they've always had a little bit of a hard time with the original choice of iTunes as the name for their primary media player. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a bit. It's a. It, there's so many options out there. Yeah. Rhapsody is one. And you know, you talked about YouTube. Honestly, in the end, for me. That's the ultimate backstop. If I can't find a song, you know, we've got our iPod <laughs> Touch in the dock on the Bose right. speaker in the kitchen. I just go to YouTube and find right, it up, right. you know. Oh, and that's the other thing with YouTube Red, um, Google Play. If you're a member, then you can play music on YouTube and close the YouTube app and still let, have the music oh, play. Oh, really? It's got background. Whereas if, you, if you're not a member, when you quit the app, the music stops. Okay. So there's little way. I mean, there's so many different music services out there. And again, to me, there's like they're all the same. And coincidentally enough, the one that sets itself apart the most, I think, is Tidal with the $20 Right. Well, that's not a great high, way to set yourself apart, it's not, though. It's not. But I mean, Well, and the audio are, quality, right? Yes. The audio quality. If you're an audiophile, and again, I don't know. Is it, a, is it a placebo thing where it's really not happening? It is a higher bit rate, but I don't know that I've ever been able to actually hear it. And I've tried. Like, I have these $800 headphones. So it's like, okay, I have good headphones that are, like, ridiculous. I try to play it in the hi-fi experience and then the regular experience. And it's like I'm trying to find it. It's, it's not like, we, oh, I can hear it immediately. So I don't even know, like, who, who is hearing this. Yeah, well, it seems like it's such a niche of customers mm-hmm. that really care about that. So Pono Music, or Pono Music, oh, the, the Neil Young thing. Oh, God, yeah. Which is, it looks like they've been temporarily shut down yeah, since, they're, they're since July. Yeah, they're business model. They're pivoting. Yeah, so but that was the same idea. It was hi-fi. Mm-hmm. It was the idea of high-quality, lossless right. music. So No one could hear it there either. It, it seems like this is something that's very important to the artists, to Jay-Z, to mm-hmm. Neil Young, and to no one else. <laughs> At least right, among, yeah. the, among the masses. Yeah, Obviously, the many masses. audiophiles out there. Because most people, I don't even think most people buy headphones. I think most people use the headphones that come with Earbuds. their phone. Yeah. And those are horrible. I mean, yeah. really, they're not great. You but they're fine for yeah. MP3s. Right. But, but you shouldn't be paying for a $20 a month music no, service with your Apple No, earbuds. don't you dare do that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's all I got. Okay. Wait, any any uh, closing thoughts on music services? No, I think I want to just stick with you know the comments that led Kevin to call me wise. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> yeah, don't push it. <laughs> has he said anything else? Has he addressed me yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he has. I got to call it back up. <laughs> uh, good stuff. All right. Well, let us know what services you guys listen to. If you're watching this on YouTube, there are comments below. Leave us a comment there. What is your favorite music service and why? That's a good one. Yeah, yeah I'd be interested in reading I that. I want to know. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to respond on the radio or the podcast, just send an email to tips. Well, let's see. Where, where should we send it? Send it to tips. Yeah, send it to tips at geekwire.com. Mm-hmm. And then if you're on YouTube, 
Leave a comment Leave below. Leave a comment. And uh, maybe we will even feature your comment next yes, week. Yes, next week on Geared Up. Mm -hmm. All right, so Monica, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, yes. thanks for having me, come guys. Back, yes, Andrew's, <laughs> Andrew loves it when you come in because he doesn't have to talk to me the whole time. <laughs> well, I'm glad to come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, until next time, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. We'll talk to you next time on Geared Up on GeekWire. You've been listening to GeekWire, an independent national technology news site based in Seattle, Washington. For news, events, podcasts, and more, visit us at geekwire.com. <laughs>